My name is John Points. I'm in the Indian Nations Council in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I'm here today to share some tips and techniques with you on carving jack-o'-lanterns. There are a lot of different instruments you can use to clean your pumpkin, which is a really important aspect of preparation. These all look really cool. The boys will gravitate to these because they're big and bright colored, but these don't work well because they don't fit inside the pumpkin. Anything that has teeth on it is probably gonna work really well, and dads, you'll like this one because ooh, it comes with a knife inside it. More power. Those are great. Um, a scraper works well because you can get down inside the pumpkin, but it's hard to beat an old-fashioned measuring cup because you can put your thumb in it and you can just put your hand right down inside the pumpkin and you can get a lot of leverage to clean the inside. For carving, um, there are all sorts of things. We recommend no knives. Uh, we only use carving saws. They work well. Uh, there's lots of them on the market. Um, Personally, this is a set that I picked up at Target. They have it every year. They're like $10. This is a great set. This is actually the cleaner, and it will flat tear it up um, inside. So this is something that I would recommend. But at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, you can get saws like this. These work very well. The thing to remember about a pumpkin is it's a piece of fruit, and the minute you put a candle in it, you're cooking it, and so its life is not gonna be very long. That's why they smell so good, but they're, they're gonna shrivel pretty quickly. So go with cold light. Um, there are battery-powered products that work really well that simulate a candle flame. Um, you know, lots of little tea lights out there. I like this one because you can plug it into a wall and you can change the color of the light. So you can put a Christmas light in there. Pumpkins are like people. They have a good side and they have a bad side. And it's really important to determine which. And if you rotate the pumpkin, you'll learn real quick that there's always a side that has calluses. This is the side that rested on the ground. Most people don't realize that pumpkins grow like this and not upright. So we want to put our artwork on the nice clean side. And this is where we're going to fix it after we clean our pumpkin. What I recommend is we actually do a circular cut for the lid rather than a sawtooth because it's always hard to find the way the lid goes. So I have them put a notch in the back, triangular notch, and that's going to be on the back of the pumpkin. And then what we do is we just cut a circular lid around the top. Now it's important to note that the saw is coming in at 45 degrees, not straight up and down 90 degrees or the lid will fall inside. So we want to we want to go in a circular motion around the lid coming in at 45 degrees and this will all make sense when we're finished. The nice thing about a circular lid with the notch, the notch just helps you line it up, is if you're lighting your pumpkin and trick-or-treaters are coming, you can just drop that lid right on there. You don't have to search for the way it goes. One of the things you want to do when you first get it out is you just want to take all this extra flesh off. You don't need that. And then you want a smoke hole. You want a draft so that when you put a candle in there, it will draw air. And what I recommend, again, this is the back of the pumpkin. Here's your notch. We're going to put our smoke hole, we're going to hide it right behind the stem so it's not apparent. So you just cut a little circular hole right there and we clean it. And there is your smoke hole. And what this does is it makes your candle burn brighter, it draws air in, and the smoke's allowed to come up here. From the front, people looking at your jack-o'-lantern don't see the notch and they don't see the smoke hole. Next is the fun part. You get to clean it out, and preparation is 90% of pumpkin carving. It's really, really important to do a good job on this. I'm going with the measuring cup. This is kind of my instrument of choice. Again, all of these things that we looked at earlier are fine, but um, this is what I found works best for me. So the, the thing to do is just get in there and get after it and scrape those sides as best you can. And we're outside, and the nice thing about this is the deer and the possums and the skunk all love the pulp. So we're going to be environmentally correct here and recycle. So that is the cleaning. And again, it's really, really important that you get all that stuff that's hanging down from the side. Now you can see, here's our notch, back of the pumpkin. There's our smoke hole. And most importantly, we cut it 45 degrees so that our lid doesn't fall inside. And if you look at it, you can see that you've got this surface that the lid's going to rest on. 
Now, look at the inside of our pumpkin now that we've cleaned it. And I did this with a, with a measuring cup. You can see it's really pretty clean. And that's real important so that, again, we don't get those hangers on the inside. You can still freehand and put your art on here, but there's a lot of available art that you can transfer onto the pumpkin. Now, the problem is you have two-dimensional art and you're gonna put it on a three-dimensional globe. What we wanna do is we wanna find a way to affix our art to the pumpkin. Now, you can see that I've taken a pair of scissors and I've cut along the edge of the art like this. I've made incisions and what that does is that allows us to wrap the art. You can overlap and you can wrap the art on there. So we're going to take our artwork. We've got it on our, our good side of the pumpkin. We're gonna hold it down there and I'm gonna take masking tape and we're going to overlap that. You can see what I've done there. And we're just gonna put that masking tape on there like that. And we're gonna do this all the way around. Once we have the art fixed to the pumpkin, we're ready to start the carving process. What you wanna do is you wanna take a common push pin and you wanna outline your art. So go right along the edge of every line of your art and put a series of holes into the meat of the pumpkin. More holes is better. What you're doing is you're putting a dotted line on the pumpkin that shows where you're going to carve. More holes is better. Um, once you've completely outlined your art, you're ready to start the carving process. Most important thing that you must do is when you start, think of your artwork as a target and you're gonna start at the bullseye, okay? So you're gonna carve the, the nose out first and then you're gonna go to the eyes, eyebrows, mouth, and then finally finish with the hands. The reason for this is if you start at the outside and work in, you're weakening the pumpkin and when you start sawing in the middle, it's all gonna collapse. All right, well that concludes our session on tips and techniques for pumpkin carving. Hopefully you came up with a few ideas today that you can use and that you will. And I just want to wish you a successful and happy Halloween.